welcome to the Pediatric Review, where I help you prepare for your pediatric nursing exams. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website. Let's talk about pediatric infectious disease. So the first one is the measles. So the incubation period is 10 to 20 days. The communicable period is four days before the rash to five days after the rash appears. The spread is by respiratory secretions, blood, and infected urine, so airborne and direct contact precautions. Signs and symptoms are fever, weakness, malice. The three C's, corsia, cough, conjunctivitis. They will have a rash on their face that turns the gradually spreads down to the feet, red to brown over time. They'll have copalix spots, which are small, red spots with a bluish white center and a red base located on the buccal mucosa, and last three days. Nursing interventions, so airborne droplet and contact precautions, quiet activities and bed rest, cool mist for cough and clusa, and antipyretics and vitamin A. Then we have roseola. This is a type of herpes virus. The incubation period is 5 to 15 days. The communicable period source and transmission is unknown. Signs and symptoms are a sudden high fever greater than 102 for 3 to 5 days and a rash that appears several hours to 2 days after the fever. Our nursing interventions are supportive interventions. Then we have rubella or German measles. This incubation period is 14 to 21 days with a communicable period of seven days before and five days after the rash. It is spread by nasopharyngeal secretions, blood, stool, and urine, so this will be droplet and direct precautions and contact. Signs and symptoms are fever, weakness, pink, red, maculopapular rash over the entire body, petechiae on the soft palate. Nursing interventions are that airborne droplet and contact precautions and keep away from pregnant women. Then we have varicella or chickenpox. The incubation period is 13 to 17 days with a communicable period of one to two days before the rash to six days after the vesicles have formed and crusts have formed. Spread by respiratory secretions and direct contact with skin lesions, so droplet airborne and contact precautions. Signs and symptoms are fever, weakness, anorexia, a macular rash which first appears on trunk lesions and becomes pustules and they begin to dry and then crust. Nursing interventions are strict airborne droplet and contact precautions. We may use a cyclovir or the varicella immunoglobulin or intravenous immunoglobulin for those who are immunocompromised. Then we have mumps. So this incubation period is 14 to 21 days with a communicable period immediately before and after paratoid gland swelling spread by saliva or urine, so airborne contact and droplet precautions. Signs and symptoms are fever, headache, malice, anorexia, jaw or ear pain, followed by a paratoid gland swelling. This is the key thing that is on like the side of your face. Pain increases when chewing. Orchitis or acute meningitis may occur. Nursing interventions are airborne droplet contact precautions, bed rest until paratoid gland swelling subsides, avoid foods that require chewing, hot and cold compresses. Then we have pertussis, also known as whooping cough. This incubation period is 5 to 21 days with a communicable period when discharge from the respiratory secretion occurs. Spread by respiratory secretion, so droplet airborne contact precautions. Signs and symptoms are a cough with a whooping inspiration, cyanosis, respiratory distress, listlessness, irritability, anorexia. Nursing interventions are airborne droplet contact precautions, antimicrobials, reduce irritants and environmental factors that increase coughing, suction and humidified oxygen if needed, and infants don't receive maternal immunity to pertussis, so they are at risk before they are vaccinated. Diphtheria has an incubation period of two to five days. A communicable period is variable until three negative cultures of discharge from the nose, skin, or lesions spread by direct contact with an infected person, carrier, or contaminated articles. Signs and symptoms are a low-grade fever, malice and sore throat, foul smelling, mucopurulent nasal drainage, dense pseudomembrane formation in the throat that may interfere with eating, drinking, and breathing, 
lymphadenitis, neck edema, or a bowl neck. That's a key thing. Nursing interventions ensure strict isolation, administer diphtheria antitoxin after sensitivity has been ruled out, and antibiotics provide suction, humidified oxygen, and tracheostomy care if needed. Then we have poliomyelitis. So incubation period, 7 to 14 days. Communicable period is unknown. The virus was present in the throat one week after infection and in feces four to six weeks after. Signs and symptoms are fever, malice, anorexia, nausea, headache, sore throat, abdominal pain, soreness, and stiffness in the trunk, neck, and limbs, which progress to paralysis. Nursing interventions are enteric and contact precautions, supportive treatment, bed rest, monitor for respiratory paralysis, and physical therapy. Next, we have scarlet fever. So this incubation period is one to seven days with a communicable period of 10 days, but can last for months. It is secreted in the nasopharyngeal secretion, so contact and droplet precautions. Signs and symptoms are high fever, flesh treaks, vomiting, headache, and large lymph nodes in the neck, abdominal pain, a red, fine, sandpaper-like rash on the axilla, groin, and neck that blanches with pressure, De squamous sheet like slothing of the skin on the palms and soles that appear by one to three weeks. Tongue is coated white furry covering with red papillae, which is known as white strawberry tongue. Tonsils are red, edemus, and covered with exudate. Pharynx is edemus and beefy red. Our nursing interventions are contact precautions and respiratory precautions until 24 hours after antibiotics and supportive therapy, bed rest, and encouraged fluids. Then we have erythema infectisonium or Fitz disease. This incubation period is 4 to 14 days but up to 20 and the communicable period is unknown. Before the rash, people will be asymptomatic or a mild fever with malice, headache, and running nose. Then stages of the rash will be erythema of the face that develops and disappears after one to four days. Then one day after the rash appears symmetry symmetrically on all extremities. Our nursing interventions are to avoid pregnant women in supportive care, antipyretics, analgesics, and anti-inflammatory medications. Then we have mono. Incubation period is four to six weeks. Communicable period is unknown. Signs and symptoms are fever, malice, headache, fatigue, nausea, abdominal pain, sore throat, and enlarged red tonsils. Edemopathy and heptosplenomegaly. Discrete macular rash over the trunk may occur, and they're going to need supportive care and monitor for splenic rupture, which will be abdominal pain in the left upper quadrant and left shoulder. Then we have Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. This has an incubation period of 2 to 14 days. It comes from a tick. Signs and symptoms are fever, malice, anorexia, vomiting, headache, malaysia, a maculopapular or petechiae rash on the extremities, palms, and soles, but can spread to other areas, and they'll need supportive care and antibiotics. So for pediatrics, let's talk about immunizations. So precautions, they are contraindicated if a patient has had an anaphylactic reaction to a vaccine or its components previously. There are live virus vaccines which are not administered to immunocompromised patients, individuals with a sensitivity to gelatin, or pregnant women. So this is a chart of the recommended childhood immunizations. So at one month, they'll get a hepatitis B. At two months, they'll get an inactive polio, a diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, or a DTaP. They'll get an influenza type B, pneumococcal, and rhodiovirus. Then at four months, they'll again get that inactivated polio, the Tdap, the influenza type B, this pneumococcal, and the rhodiovirus. So again, these are all the same as the two month. At six months, they will again get the inactivated polio, Tdap, influenza type B, pneumococcal, rhodiovirus, and again, the hep B. So this is the same one that they get at one month. So they get, again, all the same as the two and four, but then adding on that one month. Then 12 to 15 months, they'll get a 
influenza type B, a pneumococcal, an MMR, a hep A, and a varicella vaccine. Then at 15 to 18 months, look at a Tdap. At 18 to 33 months, look at another hep A. At four to six years, they will get an inactivated polio, a Tdap, an MMR, and a varicella. And then at 11 to 12 years, they'll get an MMR if not given at four to six years, an adolescent Tdap, a meningococcal, and an HPV. It's important to note that normal reactions to a vaccine are tenderness, redness, swelling, low-grade fever, drowsiness, and decreased appetite. If you would like a copy of this study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.